Welcome back. I mentioned earlier that while we could click all the column headings to order the results in the list, only the default ordering works at this stage. This is a security feature because it's possible to inject junk into the ordering column values that at best causes an error or at worst poses a real security threat. To counter this, we add a custom constructor method to the list model that defines a white list of permitted ordering fields. In your editor, find the models slash messages.php file, open it up and position your cursor before the first method in the class. Then find the snippet called backend list model constructor and bring up the form. The variables here are just to get the name of the class right for the at return doc block. So we enter the name of the component, hello, in proper case, and the name of the model, messages, in proper case. Insert the snippet, clean up the line breaks at the end, and let's see what we've got. Okay, so JModel lists constructor, like JModel, takes a configuration array, and one of the configuration settings JModel list is aware of is called filter underscore fields. In our constructor override, you can see we are checking if this setting has been defined. If it isn't, we're going to set a default value for it. The value of this setting is merely a white list of field names that are permitted for usage in queries. So you can see we've got quite a few of the standard field names. We've also added some variants of those names that are query specific, just in case someone else using this model wants to use them. That's really all there is. When you click on the list headings, it sets the ordering column for the list in the request. We know that the populate state method in the model will pick this value up from the request, and when it does, it checks it against the whitelist. If the requested ordering column is not in the whitelist, it reverts safely to the default ordering. When implementing your own components, you can of course tune this list based on the fields available in your database tables. That's it for this lesson, and barring unforeseen additions, the last lesson in this block for setting up the backend list view. I hope it's been informative and you're starting to get a good understanding of how the Joomla MVC works. But no list is complete without data, so in the next block of lessons, we'll be creating the edit form so we can add and change data in our component. See you back soon.